Hello. Uh, interesting case I had this week. I was actually at a customer that has one of these Perforexes. And he has, of course, ePlan. And, and for the longest time. Now, what we, of course, know on his side, if we actually take a look, and we always talk about this, or I always talk about it, you know, on, on the front end side, you can create your electrical schematics based on the parts uh, and the parts data that is in the data portal. So what the people uh, also do use the data portal information for is actually to create the 3D and eventually even to share it. And, and because we have all these features, we do these just that much faster than any other out there, you know, and I'm not going to name any names, but we probably know them. So the engineering time at this company was already at the top and, you know, the, the, the reports they were creating, the labeling schemes they had, everything was really perfect. Now, what was kind of a surprise to me is when they did the 3D, initially the first reflex was to actually do the 3D as, as we typically do, you know, uh, in, in a CAD package. But in reality, when we do it in ePlan, we still use the device concept. Now, of course, if you do not have one of these Perforexes, or you intend to buy one, but you don't necessarily have the Perforex delivered, we can still offer you the services of pre-drilling every single uh, hole or, or, or any cutout that is required. And this is quite interesting because when you use with the, the ePlan tool, every single object above and beyond the device tag it has, which pretty much is, is a way to identify each component and to find it back in the schematics, we also have and carry uh, information uh, along the object, a little bit like this shadow that you see here. With each ePlan object that has a part number in the device tag, there is also a shadow. A shadow, let me rephrase it, there is a drilling information. As you can see, every component here, like here, that requires like extra holes to fix it, these informations, these hole informations, are within the ePlan data. Now, outside of ePlan, it's different because it's just a step file. But what we have is we have extra information that actually make this drilling completely seamless, okay? So technically, let me just jump into an ePlan uh, project. Of course, in an ePlan project, you create your schematics. Each of these schematics represents a part. I mean, we have this component here that is picked from the data portal. It happens to be a Phoenix contact part here. You can actually visually see it. And it has a certain dimension. It has like an order number, a description, whatever. Everything that shows up in a building material is there. We do associate this to what we call a device tag, CR1. Now, if you dr drill into it, this CR1 has an A1, A2 connection that may be wired up to some other devices. But let's focus just on the device itself. Here is the device in the 3D. Now, of course, the 3D is part of a global layout. So we have a panel. Inside the panel, you can see we have uh, a housing. We have inside the housing, we have, of course, on the front side, a door. And we have a mounting plate. Now, each of these items, part of the panel, represents a certain surface we can put devices on. On the housing, you may place uh, here some uh, fans or, or just, you know, uh, AC systems or some loud light towers, whatever. And on the back plate, you may actually place all your components on something like these DIN rails. Okay? Now, Every one of these DIN rails, every one of these components, it doesn't matter, DIN rail, cable dock, whatever, even if it's a mechanical part, has the same idea. It has a specific device tag, rail number one. It has a part number, part number with description, whatever, that shows up in a bill of material. And behind the scene, if we actually go up to that part number, you will see that it has some manufacturing information, like drilling information. Drilling information I can actually view. I can just go here, turn that on, and you will see these red dots all over the place, right? These are actually the holes that are uh, pre 
registered under the parts. And what that does, it gives me the option to actually generate a drilling view. Now, the uh, drilling view, which is kind of a, a special um, um, item here, is and, and can be actually generated just to actually show you how it's actually, you know, where you need some holes, can be actually visualized very precisely here. So for every single surface that we have, we will have, remember I said on that housing, we have actually this rectangle and this plug, and we have all the details up here. This is actually a drilling view. This is something that anyone inside ePlan can actually call up. It's, it's here. It's a drilling view that can be turned on, can be visualized, and the data is directly relative to what was on the 3D. So if you move any of these objects, if I move any of the uh, docks, rails, or whatever, these holes and these individual X, Y, Z uh, specific things will actually move. So here, this is the beauty behind the scene. At Rital, we do have, of course, this tool, and we have a Perforex. Now, if you own a Perforex, all you have to do is really simple, is you just have to go export, machining, and there are two types of machines, the BC, regular one, and the LC, LC is a laser one. So if I go to the BC, and this is basically what you saw here on the, um, uh, here, it's, kind, it's, it's, it's a spindle, that actually picks up, it's kind of hard to see, but here we have different tools. We have 20 different tools we can feed with either a mesh or a tap, uh, or it even has like a special head that can actually do some milling. Now, the idea behind the scene is that these 20 different tools can be changed or exchanged, depending on what you really need and what kind of drill meshes you have. So here you can see these different tools. They are actually listed one by one they correspond exactly to the tools, and there's a kind of a description to each of those. Now, you may not always have the proper drill for the hole that was actually specified in the manufacturing data. Doesn't matter, because the tool selection will automatically, if it's a, a, a drill hole, it will automatically go to the next larger one, which basically means, let's say I have a 3.5 and a 3.7 drill. If I actually order a 3.6 millimeter hole, it's just gonna drill the next bigger one. Makes sense, right? Because you just wanna fit it in there. Now, it does the same thing or kind of the same thing, but in a reversed way when uh, you use uh, a thread cutter, right? So it's basically use a different thread cutter or you can actually tell it to use a smaller thread cutter. Because usually, if you actually want to put some sort of a, a screw, you need that other screw, so you need a smaller one, or all you need is basically just a hole and somebody will do the thread. Now, I'm not gonna go into the other things, but just to show you very quickly, there is a folder here that you can export to, and if you actually put this export into the auto import of the Perforex, all you have to do is this and you will just simply generate all the different files that are required by the Furfrex. And now if you jump over to the Furfrex machine, you will see these new orders appear with the RAC Eplan Retail Canada naming and the different surfaces. If you have multiple surfaces, all the details in the Furfrex are automatically sucked in in the auto import. All you have to do is make sure that on the Furfrex, on the machine itself, you share the same folder here where you export it to. This can, of course, again, be set here in the scheme, in the individual scheme, where you are actually exchanging those files. Very interesting, this is based on the scheme concept. So you can very easily just export the scheme here. This is an XML. So you do not have to redo all those settings individually for every single user. There is another video I created that actually will tell you and will show you what to do with these messages that actually pop up. Because you can see here, I have 11 cutouts exported alternatively. I have the details in the message management, as it says here on a different video, I actually show you what to do with them. So you can actually analyze which holes were 
alternatively exported, which means that 3.5, 3.7 mesh, and I ordered a 3.6, will tell you, oh, I did not use the 3.6, I did not have it, I actually exchange it for 3.7. So it's a very cool feature, and it's really completely seamless, which means I do not have to put any extra efforts into it. As soon as my design is done, boom, I can print and drill my holes, or I can just send it to retail, and to send it to retail, nothing easier, use the eManage and upload it to the eManage share it with rac at retail.ca and they will be able to actually just download your project and again print drill the holes before they actually send you the panels for a minimal rac cost uh, which will save you the time for you to do it the quality uh is is, is just awesome because it's a cnc machine that does it uh the cutouts on the laser are even more fantastic so we can choose um, talk to your retail and e-plan people about this but certainly if you own one of these retail perforexes do not spend any time for the drilling just export i repeat here file export machining choose the machine with the right tool configuration make sure you match the tools with what is on your machine and bingo, it's done. It's super easy. Do not redraw in some sort of an auto dash, whatever, DXF, whatever. Don't spend any time there. It's doing it automatically. I hope this will help any future Perforex customers to print drill automatically. Thank you. This was Roland, and I wish you a happy 2025 and do not waste any time when you can do it automatically. Save time on the manufacturing. This is our motto for 2025. Thank you. Bye.